Welcome to Talk Time with Max Contact, the podcast where we talk about the latest contact center and customer experience, industry news, and insights. Join us as we welcome industry experts, discuss actionable strategies you can apply to your business, and help professionals like you on your path to long-term career progression and success. I'm your host, Sean McIver. Hello and welcome to another episode of Talk Time with me, Sean McIver, product owner for Max Contact. I'm delighted to be joined today by Kevin Sampson, who currently is the Head of Customer Excellence for Zen Internet. I'm not going to introduce Kevin because he's here. Hi, Kevin. Do you want to give us a bit of background about yourself? Yeah, certainly. Good afternoon, Sean, and thanks for having me on to chat. So yeah, as you said, my name's Kevin. I'm in the role of Head of Customer Excellence for um, Zen Internet, a Rochdale-based internet service provider, connectivity provider. And I've been with the business for coming up to four years, actually, which has absolutely flown. So a little bit about me. I've worked in hospitality, service, utilities, industries uh, now for, I was thinking about this earlier, coming up for 20 years, actually. So previous to moving across to Zen, like I said, about four years ago, I spent about a decade working in energy. I worked for a couple of the big players in the energy industry, working for British Gas, and then for Npower towards the end of, end of that decade. And with those businesses, I worked in a number of different change roles, um, be it change to drive business process change, drive business efficiencies, drive cost savings, or be they roles in which my responsibilities were around improving customer experience. So various various roles, customer journey improvements and things. And I would definitely say between those, those roles, I found that what interested me more than anything was delivering change that was inspired by, led by the customer. And that's why I chose to, rather than continuing down a business process, route to move into the customer focus, the customer experience rules, which I find myself in today. Excellent. So let's start there. So you were in the utilities for a number of years. I came from the same place. I was at British Gas for a number of years as well. So you're currently with Zen Internet, which is in some ways that's quite a shift because it's going from an energy provider to an internet provider. But at the same time, it's still within the utilities field. So what drew you to Zen Internet as an organization? Yeah, definitely the culture and the values that exist within Zen. So I had a connection within my network who already worked for Zen Internet around the time that I was making the decision that I think I'd, I'd given all I could to the energy industry. And to have someone in your network who speaks so highly of a business after working for them for, for more than a decade is a real reliable recommendation So I began learning a little bit more about Zen, about Zen's background, about what Zen stands for, about the values that have driven what we achieve as a company for the 27 years that we've been operating since our our founder and chairman launched the business. Really liked what I saw, liked what I learned about those values, the values that drive the culture. So our long-term fundamental objectives are happy staff, happy customers, happy suppliers, and everything that we do is so people-focused. And when you've got people that enjoy being at work, that enjoy what they're doing and that they're bought into that vision, that means that the service that they deliver to your customers, you can feel that coming through in the service that they deliver um, to their customers. I'm not saying that that makes my job, you know, the easiest job in the world or anything like that, but it's certainly an advantage. Absolutely. I'm going to feed into that a little bit, actually, and kind of point out that, you know, Zen Internet recently placed 37th in the Great Places to Work UK list. And that's a big category. So that's a huge achievement. So let me just ask, why do you think you placed so highly And do you think that that's driven by what you've just been talking about in terms of those values? And how has that then resulted in delivering a better customer experience? Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely at the root of it. So Zen is such a people-centric, people-focused business. The happiness and the well-being of its people come before profit. And that's that's quite different to many other businesses to say that the people and the planet as well come before profit. And that's just one of the reasons why so many people enjoy working for Zen. I think as well with the continually shifting employee priorities, certainly over the last few years, having such a people-focused culture has never been 
as important as it is right now when it comes to recruiting and recreating a loyal and engaged workforce. That's definitely important to us. Um, so like I mentioned, kind of installed by Richard Tang, our, our founder and chairman, all those years ago, and led by our CEO, Paul Stobart, we've got a belief that happy people will be empowered to deliver an exceptional customer service. We all work together really well. The customer is at the heart of everything that we do, and we take pride in the service that we deliver to our customers. Bringing us to the position where we are today, where Zen is, is so renowned for that people-first approach and, and the service that we offer. Would it be fair to say that over and above everything else, it, do you feel that that's the key thing that defines what some would call maybe Zen's competitive edge? Definitely, it's all connected, absolutely. So Zen's competitive edge definitely we're in a market providing a service to our customers that's available from a number of different providers of course it's the same in in any industry so it is important to to be different while we offer such a reliable service what we do is the way in which we deliver that that service and when our customers do need to speak to us the experience that they have really really sets us apart i think it's while i can say that i think that really comes through in how what customers talk about us. And an example of that would be the Trustpilot platform, for example. Many of us use it to inform our buying decisions and to be in a position where our customers rate us as excellent on that platform is, is absolutely something that we're incredibly proud of. Again, to be which recommended provider for a number of years to be the only which recommended provider really really is a competitive edge in, in this market and gives you customers the confidence in what you do in the service that you offer more recently as well i would say is b corps so are becoming a certified b corp i think in today's environment it's really really important to customers to understand the ethics of a business which is a lot about what the, the b corp status is around is really really important people want to more and more understand that the organizations they hand their money over to behave in an ethical way have sustainability priorities goals and achievements then achieve that status over the last couple of years and again that's something that i think now sets us apart in this market and gives us that edge yeah, no, that's excellent. It's also nice to speak to someone who is as passionate about those aspects, the B Corp, the compassion to staff, the compassion to employees. It's nice to talk to someone who, even in talking to you, it's clear that that passion comes through body language, everything changes as you talk about it. And that's that's fantastic. And that does drive customer excellence and it does drive a positive customer experience. However, with the internet being as key critical as it is these days, people working from home. This morning I had an issue with my internet provider who, I'm sorry, it's, it's not Zen internet, but I've had an issue with my internet this morning and it was just an exercise in frustration. So that inevitably happens for customers. So when you have that ethos of customer centricity, customer excellence, how do you approach customer complaint handling from that point of view? How can we turn complaining customers into ambassadors or evangelists for the business? Are there mechanisms? What are the mechanisms we can use for that? Yeah, that's a really interesting one because wouldn't it be lovely if I could sit here and say we don't have any complaints, but the fact of the matter is that we were operating our network on, a, on an aging copper network and that inevitably does mean that there will be times that things go wrong and that's the same with any, any business within any industry, I suppose. But it's about it's about how you feel about complaints and about what you do with them and how you turn that experience around. So to begin with, I think... When customers are kind enough to bring their issues to your attention, to give you that opportunity, that is a gift. And we need to make the most of that gift. So many customers could just turn their back on you, move away from you as an organization. So every time a customer brings an issue to our attention, we receive that feedback as a gift from that customer. And it's then critical how we handle that situation. When a customer has disruption to their connectivity, it will have a, a huge impact on their day-to-day -day life, more so in the post-COVID world that we now live in, where we rely so heavily um, on our connections for so much more than we did previously with us all working from home. We need to do all we can to minimise that disruption. We need to make sure that our help, our support from 
to our complainants is easily accessible. There is nothing worse than be frustrated to start with and then that frustration being amplified, being made even worse by being challenging to bring that issue to the attention of the company that you, you want to bring it to. So we need to make sure that it's easy to contact us, that we're accessible, and that the people who are there to answer, to answer that query, to, to deal with that complaint, that they genuinely, genuinely care. And that, of course, ties back to our values and, and how we want to inspire people to do the right thing by our customers. We need to make sure that our customer walks away from that experience knowing that we did our absolute best. And I think one question that I believe that the customers will walk away from is, is thinking if I was to, to have an issue again, is it Zen that I want to put that quest that to push that to put that issue right? And I always want the answer to that question to be yes. Once we've gone through that experience, that journey with that customer resolving that issue, I want them to leave that experience thinking, right, okay, if something were to go wrong again, I want it to be these people who put that right. And I think that's what we that's that's what we like the service we've got to deliver in that space. I like putting that twist on it as well. It's accepting that things will inevitably go wrong. I, I don't think anyone is under any illusion that complaints won't arise, but I think framing it through the lens of, okay, who would I want to lean on if I had that issue again? That's a really interesting way of framing that. Yeah, I really like that. On the other side of that, then, you've got the customers who have the fantastic experiences. And forgive me, but I'm going to kind of challenge a little bit here. So at Zen Internet, you are currently the head of customer excellence. You, in your previous role, you were the customer experience manager. And for many people, customer experience and customer excellence, well, they're kind of the same thing. So allow me to just ask a very direct question of, let's talk about the customer excellence side of things. How do you define customer excellence? Yeah, absolutely. So there are, of course, there are of course, synergies between the two. There are overlapping um, factors between customer experience and customer excellence. But for me, customer excellence is all about making sure that everything we do and how we operate is all done with the single goal of making sure the customer achieves their desired outcome. And so to do that, you often need to know and often change so much about your business to meet the constantly changing and evolving needs and expectations of your, your customers. So what we've done differently with customer excellence versus previous customer experience role is bring together all of those sources of insight and all the ways that you can then use that insight to deliver impactful and sustainable change in a way that improves things for your customers in one place. So often these functions are in different areas and different divisions within a business and can't work as well together as they can in what we have as a customer excellence function. So that means bringing together complaints, root cause analysis and insights. So for every single complaint that we receive, we perform root cause analysis on that complaint. We understand what happened to that customer, to that connection on every single complaint that we receive. We bring that together with quality assurance insight. We bring that together with our customer experience metrics and insight that we get from NPS and CSAT measurement, for example. And we bring that together in what we turn the insight engine and we feed that into the change function. That change function delivers opportunities, delivers fixes, delivers process changes, communication changes, anything that solves that problem for that customer. And then within the same team, we have measurement as well. So we continue to monitor the customer experience or internal process KPIs and measurements to make sure that the what we found from the insight and delivered through the change has had the impact that we wanted it to have through the measurement that we then have at the back end, the benefit realisation. So that to us, bringing all of that together is how we strive for and achieve customer excellence. Crikey. So it sounds like that was quite an undertaking to go through and kind of amalgamate all of that information into a, a data set or a story, if you like, shall we say, that was meaningful and insightful. How did you go about collecting information and data to analyze those moments of great customer experience? Yeah, bringing all of that data together was a little bit of a challenge. 
because of course it comes from a number of different sources so there's been a number of ways in which we've done that some of it is is done manually and some of it is done through uh, the use of our crm platform that we have that's been a huge step forward in allowing us to bring all of this together in one place what we found or what i found from experience i think is that you can't always trust a dashboard for example to tell you everything that you need to know about that customer story you can't always rely um, solely on a, on a metric on a score um, to tell you everything that you need to know so we do have we do have people within the team who analyze and interpret the verbatims that our customers give us um, to help us understand our opportunities for uh, fixes, for growth, for improvement. So that's been quite an undertaking to bring together that the number of different sources where data is in such, such different formats as well to help it, to help us understand that story and what our opportunities are. So you have a huge data set that you've unified, standardized, sanitized, and distilled down into metrics that you're able to understand. Then you've had people who are able to then dive into that and understanding some of the key indicators and some of the key points on those. How, with this data set, do you then ensure that your team are able to walk the experience of the customer, so to speak? Yeah, walking the experience of our customers. So from this data, the teams can understand so much about what our customers tell us but in terms of walking the experience all of the team are customers of our business as well so they they experience everything that our customers experience as well they use the same service they use the same technology they have the same hardware in their homes they receive the same communications so they have a the best experiences to as best they can see what our customers see and feel how our customers feel so that's possibly one of the ways in which they want the experience for the customer. Another way in which they do so, equally if not more valuable maybe, is how often we bring customers into our business as well. So when we want to launch a new product, a new proposition, we need to change something, be it because of a, a regulatory change that we need to deliver and behave differently. We, or the development of a new mobile app, actually, that's a really good example to use when we did this, is we bring customers into the business. We invite customers from our customer panel, or sometimes we go out to a broader network of customers and ask customers if they'd like to, to be involved. And we sit in a room with those customers, sometimes physically, sometimes virtually and talk to them about how they view a particular journey maybe that they, they go through with Zen or how they want to interact with us. When we were designing the, the mobile app, we brought customers into a room and talked to them about what their needs and expectations were, what delighted them about the use of. And we didn't focus on telco. We actually asked them, what do you want from your mobile banking? What do you want from your energy provider? We used not so much the transaction they wanted to complete, but what they wanted to do, the goal they wanted to reach. And we translated that into what we're here to deliver and how we could deliver that same same great moment, that same touch point for, for our customers. And I think if we didn't do this so much as a business and hadn't done it so often, where well, we have done it in the design stages of projects and products that we've done in the past, we would so easily have ended up designing something or building something that wasn't what our customers wanted. It was what we thought our customers wanted. And I've seen that be two very different things in the past. As a product owner, that is very much in my line of thinking. A lot of what we do, a lot of what the functional aspect of it is around actually having the conversation with people early on saying, this is how this we think this should work. What are your thoughts getting that feedback? And yeah, no, I think that makes that feeds in to me personally, in my experience, that definitely resonates with myself. So you've got a team who use the product and you've got a team who talk to the customers that use the product and talk about their expectations. But obviously the customer journey and customer excellence and experience is a much bigger thing with many moving parts, many cogs and aspects to it. We've talked about gathering your data at the outset. We've talked about dealing with the clients and customers directly in terms of the what their expectations are before you endeavor to start out on creating something. So if, let's take a step back and look at kind of the broader industry and the challenges um, faced by customer experience and customer excellence teams. What aspects of that customer journey do you think a lot of people in our industry either get wrong or don't put enough focus on? Yeah, so I think it might not be the biggest, it might not be the main one, but it's something that I'm looking at at the moment, so it's front of mind at the moment, is channel of choice. 
I think there is definitely room for improvement when it comes to channel of choice in customer journeys across ours and other industries. So one thing we are striving to improve on further at the moment is allowing customers to be able to contact you in the way that they prefer when they want to do that. For example, we've seen such growth in the use of social media as a customer contact channel over the last couple of years. And I don't think a lot of businesses are there yet when it comes to the responsiveness that customers expect of this channel and the level of service. Many, many customers now treat that as their primary channel of choice to interact with with a business. Of course, there are many customers whose preference will still be to write a letter, send an email, use the phone. But I think we need to get better at meeting the customer's needs of channel of choice and, and especially in that, that digital space. We know that we've got some improvements to make and we're, we're working on them at the moment. And I think one thing that we're trying to keep front of mind as we do so is not to lose sight of that human touch as you do develop in these digital service service channels, because that's so important to retain. Yeah, absolutely. I'll add to that, if I may, and say that one of the things that when multi-channel and then omni-channel started to come in, one of the things that was really interesting to me, there was this mantra of go where the customers are meet the customers on their ground. If you're going to be present on Twitter, for example, don't just use that as a marketing platform, actually use that as an engagement platform. Same with the various digital channels that have come through. What's interesting to me is that there seems to have been an industry shift whereby there was a penny drop or a light bulb moment where people realized, actually, my staff can handle three or four web chat interactions at once. And because they can handle three or four interactions at once, that's an efficiency I can make. And there's been this slow shift towards actually steering customers to digital channels and and almost removing that empowerment of being able to find the phone number that they need to get to. And so it's nice to hear you say, you know, be where the customer needs you to be uh, rather than kind of steering them down the path that's more kind of viable or appropriate for you as a business. I think that's key for me. I'm going to pivot a little bit on this. And I have to pivot on this, and I'm not even going to apologize. Kevin, you recently became a gold winner in the Customer Champion category at the UK National Contact Centre Awards. First and foremost, huge congratulations. That's quite the achievement. But I wanted to dig into that a little bit because those awards are are quite the accolade. You must be doing something different to everybody else. So let's just dig into that a bit. Who was your mentor or or mentors and what did they really teach you that resonated most significantly with you? So over over my career, I've had a number of different mentors and fantastic leaders. Just to pick a bit out of your question there and what did they teach you? I think the one thing that each of those mentors has taught me is about communication. So none of us are doing this on our own. So customer experience professionals in organizations might often be single people. They might be small teams when that entire organization exists because of the customer, sometimes disproportionately underrepresented within an organization. So to achieve what we as customer experience professionals want to achieve, being able to communicate, being able to sell that vision, being able to tell that customer story and bring people on that journey is a critical thing that you need to do and you need to achieve. And every mentor that I have had has been of that belief and has had that skill. And I've taken that from each of those individuals. Excellent. So, and as you say, the customer excellence or customer experience team or customer journey team, you're absolutely right. Certainly my experience has been a very small group within a very large organization. How much of, would you say, of your success is down to those teams that you've worked with and that you've built yourself? Or how much of a buy-in have you been able to get from the businesses where you've been working? Yeah, how much of my success is down to the teams I work with and the team I've built? 110% of it, I would say. Having a team of of skilled people who are passionate about customer experience is everything to me. I mean, working with my team, sometimes I have ideas and sometimes my team will tell me how to make it better and how to make it work. But far more than that, my team have ideas and I simply give them the, the space to bring that idea to life, the space to make mistakes, the space to try something and then try something different and keep trying until we find what works for our customers. So yeah, teams have been 
they are a huge part and teams that we work with internally are hugely influential and important to, to what we want to achieve. Okay. I'm going to go for the whole snippet moment. One simple thing can other customer experience professionals do to bring their own customer experience work to the next level? Okay, spring customer experience to the next level. You asked one simple thing, didn't you? I don't know if it's going to be that simple to achieve, but in order to lift your, your customer experience to the next level, it is so important that the that wanting wanting to deliver for the customer, want, the customer is the focus of everything you do. It has to run through your organization. It has to be in the DNA of your organization. And it has to come from the top. Now, I'm lucky that I walked into a, a role into an organization where, where the executive committee are so passionate. Again, I'm not saying that makes my job really, really easy, but it is. it certainly does help. And I think that you've got to have everyone singing from the same hymn sheet when it comes to to customer experience and the priorities in order to really lift it to the next level. So yeah, not a simple thing to deliver. I'm really, really sorry about my answer to your question there. But that buy-in from the top, the message and the communication that comes from the top, come through your organization is key. So just to circle back to that a little bit and flesh that out some more, you've worked for a large number of big organizations with vast numbers of employees. And you talked about how in certain organizations, the customer experience or the customer centric team is generally something of a smaller team. How can people in those roles at that level utilize the voice of the customer and other business insights to actually feed change within a large company where the focus can be much more around KPIs, profit margins, and some of those bigger picture items? So how do you affect change when you're in that role in a larger organization? Yeah, absolutely. I think the first thing to remember is that without using voice of the customer, without listening to those insights and making sure that you change and evolve in line with your customer needs expectations, you very quickly won't be a large organization. So I think that understanding, first of all, is really important. Being a small cog in a large machine is challenging. It really, really is challenging. I think what's really important to do is to bring the customer to life. It can be difficult for some of those divisions, departments with with different priorities within an organization to sometimes lose sight of why we're all doing what we're doing collectively. Um, nice to the customer at the end of that, that experience that's consuming that service, buying that product. So I think you have to find ways to bring the customer to life within your organization and different things will work for different groups of people in different organizations. If I think back to business I worked for previously, there were pictures of customer personas on the wall from different demographics of that organization within the meeting rooms. Now, thinking back, it's maybe a little bit cringe, but we would refer to those personas within that meeting and talk about how does the decision that we're making at this table impact this customer persona. There are, of course, other ways to do it. We bring our customers into our organization so regular that we can often refer to them as as people, the people that they, they are. Think about how the decisions we're making are impacting impacting those people. Excellent. No, I like that. And again, it's putting that customer at the center of everything. Without the customer, you don't have a business. Without that engagement, you don't have the repeat business potentially, and they'll go elsewhere. So that all makes sense to me. Okay, one last question for you. What's been your biggest work-related challenge to date? My biggest work-related challenge to date I think it's been just that, that we've just discussed, to be honest with you. So being in an environment where the needs, the wants, the emotions of the customer are not the guiding principles in decision making is such a challenging um, environment to be in. When your passion is to improve on customer experience, it really, really is a challenging environment to, to be in. So going back to something I touched on earlier, those influencing skills, being able to paint that picture, tell that story and demonstrate the impact a business decision, a way of operating is, is having on that, that customer, on that end user of a service or product has certainly been challenging. It's always rewarding when it's successful. It is always yeah, thoroughly rewarding when you're able to see that change being affected and, and decisions being made where the customer is at the heart of those decisions. But yeah, it's often a long, long journey to go on. 
And that wraps, for me, that kind of brings us full circle around to what we were saying earlier on around, you know, those biggest challenges can often become the very biggest, proudest successes. And having, thinking back to my time on the phones, the most rewarding conversations and interactions that I had with customers weren't the customers who were happy. It was actually customers who were really had a negative experience, but you have that conversation with them and they actually end up being some of the biggest proponents for the business or for you as an individual. And again, that reward comes back to that. The biggest challenge can become the biggest reward. So yeah, I would kind of back that up with that. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for your time today, Kevin. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. And yeah, thank you for all of your insight today. Hope everybody has enjoyed the conversation. Thanks a lot, Sean. It's been a pleasure to catch up. So thank you very much. No problem at all. Thank you. Talk Time is brought to you by Max Contact. To find out more about Max Contact and how our customer engagement software can help you and your teams provide smarter customer experiences, visit maxcontact.com and book your personalized demo today. Be sure to search Talk Time with Max Contact in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or anywhere else podcasts are found. And leave us a positive rating to help other like-minded individuals join the conversation. Finally, before you go, never miss a future episode by clicking the subscribe button and turning on notifications. On behalf of the team here at Max Contact, thanks for listening. <laughs>